Good morning, everybody, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. Uh, this is Paul Carruthers. I'm the communications manager for Moto America. This is our weekly podcast, Off Track. I do the podcast weekly uh, with Sean Bice, who's my counterpart out in Ohio. I'm in Southern California. You guys probably know that because we tell you every week and you probably <laughs> think of it. You wish one of us would move so we'd have something else to talk about. But uh, I'm staying put and he's staying put. So we, uh, we chat uh, weekly with a guest and each other on this, uh, on this podcast. And I think we're up to like uh, episode like 122, which is crazy to me. It's nuts. Just <laughs> one after another. And it, it seems like when we get one done and it, we turn around and, oh, we got to do another one here. So <laughs> we right. it's, kind of, it's kind of cool. And I think it shows the depth of Moto America that probably some people don't realize exists. But the fact that we're able to do that many guests and, uh, you know, 95% of them are, are Moto America people directly or, or yep. former, you know, AMA superbike racers or what have you. But um, it just goes to show how many personalities we have in the paddock and, and that we've had in the series over the years. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's, there are just tons of stories in our, in our paddock and people to talk to and every, every one of them has something interesting to, bring to the table. So that's one of the things I love about doing this podcast, Paul, that we can, we can bring that out for our fans. And also for us, we, we always learn a lot when we talk to these guys too, which is great. Yeah. Like today I actually learned how to pronounce our, our guest's name because <laughs> apparently I was doing it wrong and you gave me a little lesson. So if you got it wrong, then I'm going to be embarrassed and not know what to do. So. Well, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb there with that one, but uh, yeah, no, I think, we can talk about that too. What's funny about our guest, and we'll get into this, is his mom's name is Vanessa, but I cannot, I, well, I think I can pronounce his dad's name, but I've never actually used it because I'm not completely sure. So I, when I see his dad, I usually just say hello and wave to him and stuff. So it's like, but we'll find out. All right. Well, <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk to our guest. Uh, it's Toby Komsuk. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Kemsuk. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. I told oh, him wrong. Sean, I had it right. I told him wrong. Sean, I had it right. <laughs> it's not Kamsuk, it's not Toby. No, it's Kemsuk. You <laughs> idiot, Sean. <laughs> Don't listen to me ever again. Oh my bro. God, I'm never gonna. You, I'm not even listening to you when it. You, do you know how to pronounce Bice? <laughs> no, no, I know it's too. It's not enough letters or something. Uh, Toby, I, I thought the H you set me up for failure like that. I thought the H made it more of a um sound than an am. Unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Toby, well, welcome to the show. Toby is uh, he's he's been with Moto America I think since 2017. He's a former KTM RC Cup racer, and then uh, uh, Junior Cup racer who. Last year had his, uh, his best season of racing yet. He seems to have found a, a new home uh, in the Twins Cup Series. Uh, finished fifth in the championship last year, only one point out of fourth. And he had a best finish of fourth place, and he did that twice. So he's, he's very close and, and, and starting to sniff that podium position that I know he wants more than anything. Last year, his two best finishes of fourth, as I mentioned before, came at pit race and Barber Motorsports Park. He was also very consistent, only one DNF. I'm not sure if that was a mechanical or if he crashed. Uh, I didn't have time to look that up because I was too busy trying to figure out how to pronounce his name that Sean you know, <laughs> cut some corners yeah, told me yeah. the wrong way to pronounce his name. So anyway, Kobe, uh, Toby, <laughs> look at me. I got him. I switched the K and the T. Kobe Kamsuk. Yeah, Toby, thanks for joining us today. And it's nice to have you on here. We've watched you grow from a skinny little kid to... Uh, I, I, it, I, I seem to, maybe it's just because I'm short, but it seems to me that you're, you're pretty tall at this point. How, He's taller. How's it, how are you doing? I'm doing well, you know, just been training and, and uh, at the moment just sipping out some espresso. I'm stoked to be on this podcast. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to Toby, you, you started with us, I believe it was in 2017, correct? Um, was your first year with, with our series in Junior Cup, is that right? Yeah, and the KTM Cup. Yeah, KTM, that's right. KTM Cup, and then it transitioned to the Junior Cup. So you had some good results during that time period, but it seems, it feels to me like you, you, you even did even better in Twins Cup. Is, do you think that's true? And if so, do you attribute that to getting more skill or getting 
older and being on a bigger bike, I mean, what, what do you think about that? Do you, do you think you've gotten better? Yeah. Um, key factors I'd say it was, I have such a good, a good group of guys with me. So, um, you know, I can, I can uh, transfer data and stuff. And also the bike is bigger than the junior cup bike. So with my stature, I can fit better on the junior or the twins cup bike. Right. You know, I like the fact that he used stature instead of size. Hey, he's a college yeah. boy now. He is. He's he's college. Yeah. A well-educated young man from Banning, California, which is on the way to Palm Springs. Every time I go to Palm Springs or Palm Desert, I drive through Banning. That's where you still are, right, Toby? Yeah, yeah. I still reside in, in Banning. And uh, it's a small little town, like you said, before Palm Springs. So, yeah. <laughs> I, think I, usually, I usually go to the Starbucks there on my way through. <laughs> yeah yeah they're actually renovating that now so oh are they nope. <laughs> yeah so that's yeah you might have to stop after or something <laughs> all right i'll have to wait yeah, yeah. wait i'll have to wait till i get to the outlets <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> hey hey toby so uh i want to ask you before you know you're i believe you're in your first year in in college but i can't did you do homeschooling or were you in a regular high school when you grad when you graduated and tell us about what college you're going to and what you're studying um well actually uh for my last year uh, my senior year in high school i wanted to go back to public school so uh, i ended up going to public high school but with uh covid and all that uh it kind they kind of canceled it before the proper end of the year so that's how that went. And uh, uh, we did like a little drive through uh, graduation thing. But um, for college, I'm going to Crafton uh, Hills. It's like a little community college here in Yukaipa. And uh, studying just general ed at the moment, majoring in uh, business. You, you got your, your family, you, your family has a business, but, I, you know, tell us about what that is. Oh, uh, so my dad owns a uh, auto repair shop uh, in Banning. So I actually help him when he needs help and everything. So, and, uh, you know, get to learn the stresses on, on business and stuff through my dad. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's a good way to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just so we get this out of the way now, because I've already embarrassed myself with the pronunciation of your last name. Like I was saying at the top there, I talked, I know your mom's hey, name correction, is- correction, Sean, you actually embarrassed me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have associated embarrassment because I told you the wrong thing. But so, so Toby, well, first of all, Toby, is your, is your full name Toby or is it Tobias? No, it's a uh, full name Toby, yeah. Oh, it is. So you don't have that yeah. fancy British- name which is where a lot of times toby comes from but okay how do you pronounce your dad's name is it fat or pet what is it yeah it's a pet like if you were to pet a dog <laughs> yeah you don't pronounce ch it's not an f sound okay it's pet. yeah yeah it's not an f yeah yeah okay so uh yeah, a lot of people get it wrong but he's like oh it's whatever <laughs> oh okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> he doesn't really care <laughs> He's probably used to people just going over and staring at him and saying, hey, dad, that's what I do all the time when I talk to yeah. him. <laughs> but yeah. I got it right. I'm glad, I, I'm glad we cleared that up. That's, that's pretty good. So, um, but uh, you, so you have, he's got the repair shop. Does he ride at all? I mean, how did your riding motorcycles, uh, how did that all start? You were really young, I know, when you started. Yeah, um, so he was actually... He actually got into the sport kind of naturally. He never really raced or anything. He just did track days and just riding with buddies uh, in the canyon and stuff. But um, I kind of, well, I started out with the dirt bikes when I was four. And then I was always a fan of it. And one day I was like, you know, it'd be pretty cool to try it out. So that's how that, that happened. When I was 10, I actually started racing uh, with uh, Mini Moto USA, which is, Rocco's dad's old uh, race organization. So uh, I started out with them and now, now I'm here. <laughs> a lot of you kids grew up racing together, right? I mean, not only in just KTM Cup and Junior Cup and now Twins Cup, but it seems like those, a lot of the kids in the paddock kind of came from the same place. Is that true? Yeah, like the, like the East Coast region guys come up like uh, if they're in the same group age and then same here, like through the West Coast, um, like uh, 
beast race with Rocco and all the guys and um some guys uh left the sport though but um I was stoked to ride with them I've gotten to know some of the guys on your uh, the team you're with, your RoboM Engineering, a little bit. Matt, Michael Kopoulos, uh, quite a bit. I mean, we communicate back and forth, and I've gotten to know Matt Spicer a little bit. It's funny, Paul and I know, know uh, Sarah pretty well because she's a photographer, and we see her in the media center. But, you know, I've only recently gotten to know Matt a little bit. But tell us how you came to get involved with that team, and, and obviously you're going to be racing for them Again this year and they are very very focused on the twins cup uh class which is terrific so tell us about that relationship if you would um so uh throughout the 2019 year i was just riding junior cup and we kind of didn't know what we were doing the next year but fortunately um through uh my old teammate from last year uh, jackson he kind of uh he was going up to twins and um Matt the team owner was looking for a rider and uh, I happened to be there and I, I'm really good friends with Jackson and his family and and uh that's how that uh came about and they're so they're it's so inviting because they're such nice people and you know it, it's the best now it's also kind of cool uh for those people who don't know but the Cam Sooks travel as a family. They've got their truck, they've got a big trailer. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're doing cookouts, they're doing all that stuff, they're hanging out in the paddock. And it's, it's, kind, of, it's, it's kind of symbolic of, of, of a portion of our paddock that does come as a family and race as a family. That's, that's kind of got to be a cool thing for you that they, your parents are so involved in, and have made this happen for you. Yeah, the first three years, it was, it was just all road trip and everything. And it's a good time to spend with family and everything. And uh, I loved it, but flying is definitely different. Um, my dad misses driving. So <laughs> he, uh, he's like, Oh, let's go out to Texas next weekend. I was like, Oh, you're crazy, man. <laughs> so he actually misses that part of it then. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's, there's so many parts of the country. That's so nice to see. Like every state has its own thing. And, um, it's just the best to go out and see different things. So last year you raced on a, an SV 650, which is a very proven twins cup bike. And that team in particular has done a lot of development on them. I know, I know Michael Koppel is my gosh, he knows the insides and outs of that engine as does Matt Spicer and the rest of the team. But uh, this year they're making a little bit of a transition with this uh, new 2021 uh, Aprilia RS660 that's arrived on the scene and ha have you have you had a chance to ride either one of their race bikes or a, an, an Aprilia yet and if so what, what do you think of the bike so far? Yeah so uh, Aprilia set up a uh, a demo day out at Chuckwalla and uh, and I got to try it out in in stock form but from a base it's it's pretty uh, it's a pretty good bike so I'm stoked for 2021 and getting to try it on uh, race trim. Yeah, so tell us, you know, this the SB650 has been around for a really long time, and obviously that's a bike that, you know, it's a sport bike, but you guys have had to do a fair amount of modifications to it, for one thing. I mean, they don't even have a fairing on them of any sort, uh, uh, except for a, one model's got a bikini fairing on it, but, you know, all the bikes in the series, that those Suzuki's have fairings on them, so that everything from how that's done to what you can do with the frame, what you can do with the engine, there's a lot that can be done with that bike. And really the, um, the FC07, MT07 is the same way. I mean, that isn't a full fared bike on the street. So there's been a lot of modifications made to that. But this Aprilia RS660, I mean, it looks like a race bike right off the bat, but it's a twin cylinder bike. It's got, from what I can understand, really good electronics and good, really an, an excellent frame. A lot of things that can be done with it, um, but it starts out as a pretty stout looking motorcycle and they still kind of claim it being more of a street oriented sport bike, but it seems like the spec on it is pretty nice. So from riding that Suzuki last year to getting on really a stock one at a, at a demo day, you know, how did the bike feel? Did it feel more racy, um, smaller, lighter, you know, tell us about that bike compared to what you'd been riding. Yeah, well, I guess it's kind of hard to compare like a pure uh, race bike uh, with the stock bike, but from, I can say from a stock standpoint for the Aprilia, 
that it was it was pretty good from from a stock baseline um but with the suzuki it was fully built and everything so um it was kind of hard to gauge off of stock and and uh and purely race yeah um it's i i'm really i mean i know for us we're excited to have that brand back involved in our series and obviously they've got that rsv4 uh super bike so you know hopefully this will lead to more things with the prilia down down the way but it's it's going to be nice to have them involved in our series um for you toby i mean this is your second year in twins cup let's talk kind of about your development curve i mean as you said you started out in mini moto and then you raced in ktm cup junior cup and you know you're, you're kind of climbing the ladder as we like to say um what are your aspirations next you're a you're a tall uh rider would you go from this to stock 1000 would you go to super sport you know wh what's the next step for you and i'm not trying to by the way to robim engineering and 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 all your guys i'm not trying to get you to leave that team or whatever but you know i'm just trying to say it's it's obviously a, something you, you know you're going to want to keep moving up so what what are your aspirations from that point of view yeah so um for like uh as you know i just uh kind of take on anything <laughs> anything uh that moves me up but right now i'm uh i'm training at chuck walla actually with uh, my coach uh, jason pridmore and uh, the JP43 training guys, and um, I'm on a uh, 1,000. So um, I can literally count the number of times on my fingers how much I rode that bike, but <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm getting used to it. And, and with the help of with Jason, um, teaching me the ways how to ride the bike and aiding me to go faster. Um, uh, yeah, that's how that goes. <laughs> when you look at the coming season, I mean, you know, you're like, as I mentioned at the start of the show, you were one point away from finishing fourth in the championship. Now, a couple of those guys that were ahead of you um, are going to be gone. You're going to be on a new motorcycle. I mean, you got to get to, you, you've got to be starting to think that like you can challenge for the championship in that class. Is that right? Yeah. With, uh, with guys moving out and everything, I'm, uh, you know, I'm training hard here um, to, to win that championship, but I know it's, the class is stacked, you know, even though there's, there's bets, uh, they have a lot of experience. So um, I'm still learning and everything, but I'm excited to learn. Toby, it's, it's amazing when I think about that Twins Cup class. I mean, just, I, I've said this before, you know, on this podcast as well as elsewhere, but that, that class was seeming, seemed to be originally conceived as, well, a lot of guys in club racing race these twins bikes you know they're a little bit less expensive they're lightweight motorcycles they're you know they're easy to work on and they're they're a favorite among club racing just like bikes from the past used to be with the the old kawasaki ninja 500 or even before that people used to race rs 350s or i'm sorry rz 350 yamahas back in the day and in that class as well and in, in kind of lightweight so you know, the way that class has evolved with, with us, it started out where a lot of these guys that were former club guys came in, you know, um, like, you know, obviously Chris Parrish won the first year of the championship and it's transitioned a little bit. Now there's a huge influx of youth, a lot of development in that series. It's such a tuner class that a lot can kind of be done with those bikes. Um, and you kind of came in as one of these younger riders that got involved in it. So what do you think about that class from the point of view of now? It's quite a mixture of highly experienced riders and club riders to riders that have moved up from junior cup and are kind of using it as, as a stepping stone. Obviously, you know, that's the situation with Rocco Landers. So um, how do you like that class for the way it's a mixture of a lot of different things? Does it, does it keep you guessing on things, I guess, is what I'm wondering. Yeah. Um, I kind of love the class because it's, it's like, uh, like you said, like kids coming up and then also the vet, the, the vet riders also combining in one class, you kind of learn from the kids and also the vet riders because with the vet riders, you have uh, all the experience and everything and it's good to battle with them and kind of see how, how they, uh, how they do with the bike and everything. So. Yeah. And, you know, in, in the class too, 
I think this is the case with really anywhere in the paddock with our riders. There's a lot of camaraderie between classes, within classes, you know, the competitor, fierce competitors help each other out. Teams, you know, are that way between, you know, offering help, advice, parts, transportation, things, things like that. And, and with, but really within that Twins Cup class, there, there's a lot of drama, I think, uh, and I'll put air quotes around the word drama, um, because it's sort of it, it, it just an interesting kind of dynamic that goes on in there. But there's also a lot of that camaraderie as well. You talk about being able to talk to, you know, the younger riders and the older riders. Do you, do you, um, What's it like in the, in that paddock, the the Chris Parishes and, you know, some of the guys that have been around a, a lot, lot? I mean, do you guys all kind of feel like you're, you're sort of one big happy family that just like in a happy family, sometimes there are arguments here and there, but that's kind of what makes a family go. Does that feel like that to you? Yeah, it feels like a, feels like a big family. Uh, but every time I, I go up to the other guys, they're like, oh, slow down, kid, you know, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's uh I love those guys and and you know uh hopefully they love me you know <laughs> but yeah I'm amazed at how big that Robem engineering team is of yours I mean you know they uh they've got a, a lot of riders but there's a lot of development goes into that you know Matt Spicer is one of those guys that um I liken him to a a Steve Scheibe or a Richard Stanboli or some of these guys that have a huge engineering background and, and have and do it for a living and uh you know matt's got a very dry sense of humor but he's also um very 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 analytical to the point where you kind of have to look him in the eye and make you wonder if he's he's serious or he's joking or what's going on how is, is that your take on matt <laughs> yeah you know matt's a really smart guy and and uh, yeah, you kind of have to look him, look at him to, to analyze if he's joking or not. Sometimes, uh, <laughs> sometimes I feel like he's joking, but he's actually serious. So then he catches me off guard. But yeah. <laughs> Kobe, you mentioned working at Chuck Walla with uh, with Jason Pridmore and that group. When you, it, it, is there something specific that you feel like? Okay, this is this is where those those guys are beating me, or this is where those guys are faster that you work on or is it just a matter of just continuing to just burn laps and listen to Jason and just do little things differently? It's actually uh, a little bit of both. Um, just burning laps with Jason and then with, with him doing the one-on-one, -on -one, he kind of follows me around and kind of nitpicks little stuff. But um, also like uh, with riding the Twins Cup bike versus the 1000 bike, there's so much difference in riding style that he can teach me and and I'm so glad that he's uh he's on my side for that to to help me with that and yeah. Does regarding Jason's school does uh does Michael Gilbert work for work with you on stuff or Corey Alexander or the other people that work with Jason is there or is it just Jason with you how how does that work when you go out go out and do JP forty three training? Um, it's actually uh, all the guys from JP forty three so Corey Michael and uh, Alex Dumas it's like a big group of guys and we just um we just kind of help each other out which is the best is that something you'd like to get into later in your career i mean as far as you know obviously you've been training with that group but i a lot of those guys started being trained by that group and then they move into an instructor role at some point is that would that be something you would enjoy yeah for sure you know i i uh be, me being me i kind of like helping people out already so um, that would be a plus for sure. He's also yeah, he's Sean. Sean, real quick. Yeah. You don't know. Um, you don't know that like Chuck Wall is basically. Um, you go to the middle of nowhere and you make a left, <laughs> and you drive a little bit farther and it's on your right. But Toby has a huge advantage because you you're probably what an hour from there, Toby. Yeah, about like an hour thirty. So it's uh, super convenient for me, and uh, the track's super nice and. The people that work there are super nice, so that's a that's a win win, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a good situation for you to be in with the fact that you you know you can run out there in the morning and run back in the night if you need to. So that's rare, yeah. Sean, because even though I'm in Southern California, I'm you know it, it takes me quite a bit to get to Chuckwalla. Yeah, I mean it is it is strange about California. I, from my point of view, I mean there are a lot of tracks out there. I mean obviously there's Button Willow and Thunder Hill and 
and Willow Springs. And, you know, there used to be things like Ontario and Riverside, but you got Chuck Wall. And I always think these tracks aren't really very far for you guys. And, you know, for me living where I live now, I'm 45 minutes from mid Ohio. When I lived in New Hampshire, I was exactly 45 minutes from Loudoun too. So even though it was one track, it kind of was relatively close by. I always think of you guys as being pretty close to these tracks, but there, there, there are ways out there. I mean, they obviously have to be with the population that's in, you know, Southern California. Is it, is that kind of the case that, you know, the tracks are kind of a little bit sort of, well, at least like Chuck Wall is out in the desert because that's where, where you can put a track. Is that, is that kind of the reason? Well, it's where you can put it and where you can afford to put it. I see. Okay. Um, how, you know, how is that track, Toby? You get, a, there's a lot goes on there. My gosh. I mean, you know, they've got race weekends all the time. They're always doing events and that track gets a lot of usage. Do I, that facility itself, I don't know a lot about it, but do they, has it been repaved in a while? Does it need to be repaved? I mean, is it bumpy? Is it smooth? Is there, are there elevation changes? What, what is that track really like? Oh, like, uh, so right now they just repaved it. So it's like so smooth, like a pancake, but, uh, um, it's finally like seating in. So the grip is getting really good also. And, uh, yeah, having the, I'm actually going to a, uh, CVMA race this weekend. So I'm pretty stoked on that. And, the good thing about uh, having like a winter series is that all the guys from Moto America on their off season come out uh, out here to California and, and race. So. You know, and you, I, the reason I wanted to ask you about that is I envision it as being pretty flat. There probably aren't any cambered turns too much there, but yet um, I know from, I don't know if it was from talking to you, talking to your team or talking to your mom or dad, but I'm pretty sure that Road Atlanta is your favorite track. Am I right about that, Toby? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that so that track is nothing like Chuck Walla, is it? What do you, what is it do you like about that track? Is it the change in elevation, the S's? You know, what what's what is it about that track? Um, I really like the the elevation, like kind of like the butterflies in your stomach when you go down the hill and everything. Mm -hmm. I kind of that's what I enjoy, and then also the S's coming down the hill. Uh, that's that's very fun. It's like a roller coaster, so that's what I enjoy about it. Yeah, I mean, we Paul and I were talking about the aspects of different tracks recently and you know we we know obviously the corkscrew is laguna seca and for me road america is you know canada corner although there's a couple other aspects of it but for sure it seems like the s is that that's the quintessential part of that uh of road atlanta track and it's interesting that you identify it as being the thing that you you like a lot it can't be too much further from your house though um can it uh, <laughs> That's that's a long trip from uh, Banning, California, out to um, you know uh, Br Brazelton, Georgia. So, and it's kind of cool that our first round will be there. So you're kind you must be kind of excited to get the season started, so you can go to your favorite track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, what's good about all the tracks is that they all have elevation too, um, like Barber and and Laguna, so and Pittsburgh. So, uh, I really enjoy uh, elevation. Toby, will you get a chance to, to ride the new bike much in race trim before Road Atlanta, do you know? Um, I believe we have a test, but um, the team's still kind of working it out. Okay. Well, you know, you reminded me about one thing, Toby, regarding, you know, for instance, Chuck Walla versus coming out to, the, you know, the tracks that we have in our series. And it's something that I always like to listen to Cameron talk about because, where Cameron lives in Cameron uh, Bobier, where he lives in Northern California, you know, it starts out the years, it's pretty green up there, but it, it gets turns brown quickly. And that's kind of a, uh, an aspect of California. But he said the, the thing that he always loves about Road America, or the tracks we go to is he can't get over how green things are. Do you feel that when you go to some of our tracks, it just feels so different than what you're used to in California? Yeah. Um, it can kind of get distracting, you know, run out the track now and duck it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, You're busy looking at a pine tree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at all the trees and the deers and stuff now. I'm joking. But um, <laughs> yeah, over here, out here, it's kind of dry. And uh, for instance, like Laguna, it's more of like a dry uh, setting, but it's always nice to see Road America and all the East Coast, uh, East Coast tracks being so green. Um, Well, I, Sean, I don't know how much more you have for Toby. We could cut him loose, or do you have something else? 
No, but man, I gotta I gotta look up the origin of Cam Suk and find out why. Oh, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna try to prove that the guy with the name is actually wrong about how the name should be pronounced. Well, well, listen. You we don't knew, believe the guy with the we, name. We we knew Rex or we knew of Rex Bochamp back in the day, right? Uh, and we don't know how Drake Beecham's name is Beecham and spelled the same way. So I'm uh, just saying, I don't want to discredit uh, Pet or the Cam Sook name, but I'm still going to figure. Toby, out. Toby, he always has to be right. <laughs> <laughs> this time he's wrong. What, you know, you want to talk to me about how to pronounce Carruthers? Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> well, I bet you there are some people that might. No, I think Carruthers is pretty, that's pretty much right, I think so. Yeah. yeah. All but, right, um, guys. Yeah. Well, Sean, I know you've probably got a little, uh, a little message that you can tell our fans before we, we cut Toby loose. Yeah, I mean, first, you know, Toby, from, from my point of view, thanks for being on, and um, it's high time we got you on. It was really great to have you, and I mean, good luck this season, and good luck with your, your studies at your first year in college and everything, and I, I just want to add that we're getting closer to this, our, the start of our season, and uh, we'll be at Road Atlanta before you know it, so make sure you go on to our website and uh, take a look at our schedule. We're going to be all over the country. And um, click under, click on calendar, and you can you can click on each uh, race weekend and go. Uh, most of the places we go, you can buy tickets at this point, and it's always good to get those done ahead of time because, as as I used to do, um, I would get my tickets early on, and then by the time it was time for the race weekend, I'd be like, oh, I don't have to pay for this; it's already done. I, it's like a, some, I'm going for free because I forgot I already paid for that stuff. So. Um, and you can also get sub uh, the subscription to Moto America Live plus our streaming service the same way. You know, get that done early, and there's lots of content on there already. But when we uh, when our season starts, I mean, man, you get to see everything on Live Plus, and it's uh, you know most of the practices, all qualifying, all the races, and you know we've got five classes. We'll have King of the Baggers um, this year for three rounds, which um, you know is a is a huge. Uh, change in addition to last year's invitational that was obviously a one round event this year we've got a three race championship and you know that's going to be fun and, and you can you can see that on our our tv programming and you can come and see it in person and also again via live plus and you get to see the twins cup class with toby cam sook who's going to be on an aprilia rs660 this year with robem engineering and toby we can't wait to see you again when the season starts and uh, good luck to you on this season yeah thank you sean i'm impressed that you've actually bought a ticket to a motorcycle race before <laughs> oh yeah man i used to buy them all the time i was unless you were just lying i guarantee you didn't buy them in advance on the computer because back then you probably had to dial an 800 number or something to buy them in advance. gosh well, i i can remember going to the going to the track in the winter time and buying my ticket um, by going to the office, not even calling them up, just having it so I got it ready. But I'm serious. You buy it early enough, it's like, oh, you don't even realize, hey, somebody the must money didn't get spent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So good stuff. All right, Toby, I appreciate you coming on. And um, it'll, be, it'll be fun to watch you continue your growth as a racer in, uh, in the Twins Cup class. I'm sure you'll like that new motorcycle, and I'm sure you'll have a successful season. Please give your parents our best. I know your mom had a bit of a foot issue that she still seems to be dealing with, but it um, looks like it's getting better and, and say hello to your dad and also uh, give that little Frenchie a hug for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you for having me on and uh, I'm stoked for 2021. All right, we look forward to seeing you in a few weeks or a few months or a month or something. <laughs> yeah, Bye guys. Sure. See you later. Thank you.